Hello, and welcome back to Terraria Minus Two. Since the last episode, I spent a little bit of time off camera exploring more to the right, and there was a big desert here. And I also explored a little ways into a cave. But in any case, desert has cactus, and so now I have tons of cactus, which means I can finish off my cactus armor and increase my armor rating. So currently I have six defense, but if I go over to the workbench, which is apparently the place that one makes cactus armor, I can make cactus helmets and some cactus leggings. And just like that, I'm up to nine defense, uh, thanks to the set bonus. And so that is super cool. We are arriving at the corruption, which is a dangerous place, but we have a number of assets, including an umbrella and some glow sticks, which will allow us to see a ways down here. And so I can always use ropes or pillar back out. So let's take a look. Let's use the umbrella. See how far down this goes. Seems promising. There's our glow stick. Yes, this is going all the way down. Okay, neat. To these altars and things. Okay, so assuming that I now have the capabilities to fight off these guys, which it appears that I do. The occasional crit and yeah, I'm getting like twos and sixes hitting those guys. We might be able to find some good loot down here in some of these I guess they're not really pots. I'm not sure what they are actually supposed to be. Kind of gross looking and they make a crazy noise when you break them. Those things. Silver coins and copper coins found inside that one, for example. Uh, but we might find some life hearts in here. We might find all kinds of things. And of course, we'll find shadow orbs, such as the one down there. Uh, that looks like it's gonna take a lot of bombs to get to. Let's see if there's any that are a little bit closer and easier to reach, if possible. And yeah, like this one down here looks pretty close to get to, and so let's try to go after that. And so I think one, two, oops, crap. My bombs are going everywhere. Okay, not exactly what I wanted, but good enough. Yeah, a couple more bombs, and I believe this will earn us a musket. And the last time I checked, Musket does not have a P or a D in it, which means it's a weapon we can use, and one that actually hits pretty hard. Speaking of weapons that hit hard, I do have a bow with some flame arrows. Interesting, that guy did not stay on fire. I'm not sure if it's because he was touching this little bit of water, uh, or if it's because somehow they're fire immune. Either way, it doesn't matter right now. Um, what would be useful is to have some wooden platforms on the bar, I think. I think I'll actually prefer them to ropes since there is a background in here, and so if we put some wooden platforms down, I can just use them to kind of reascend up from here. And so we'll do that and continue to explore around and see if we find any other good loot. All right, not in this kind of immediate cave, but there is another shadow orb that doesn't look like we have to dig down too deep. Yeah, I could afford to spend a few bombs to get down to that one that's just down on the right side of the screen over there, so we'll go down after that. Let's experiment with the uh, flame bow again after I kill off one of these guys. All right, fire arrows, do your thing. No, I think these guys are immune to fire, perhaps. Which, I guess, since they're, I don't know, corruption is a weird place. That seems plausible to me, in terms of whatever lore would be associated with these particular monsters. Let's go ahead and get one bomb there, and then I think I could just go ahead and toss a couple more. Three more, it appears. Kind of bomb down a bit more over there. And we'll at least break open one more shadow orb, and we might get the shadow orb kind of like ball of light pet. Oops, heal. Yikes, these guys are doing some damage. Which wouldn't be super great, but I wouldn't mind it. And a ball of hurt is the thing that would be really awesome because... Ooh, Eater's Souls Banner. Because while the Zealous Silver Axe is way better than the Tin Axe than we started with, I would not mind having a real melee weapon that I can use kind of constantly. All right, let's... How much damage do the arrows do? Yeah, they do way more damage, so let's fire some more arrows on you. Oh, I'm out of torches. Torches, torches, torches! Brian likes to have more torches so we can see what he's doing. As do the viewers. Um, I'm going to need a way out of here, so let's go ahead and do this. And then one, two, uh, three. 
There we go. Great. Ball of hurt. Strong ball of hurt. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We have a new weapon. All right. Let's see just how good that is by testing it in combat. Mortal Kombat! Oh yeah. Oh, and it's got range. Oh yeah. <laughs> ah, new favorite weapon! 15 melee damage, extra knockback. Uh, very nice. And now I can just hold on to the axe for chopping down trees. That is super awesome. That's exactly what I wanted to come down here for. And I don't know that we're ready to fight the Eater of Worlds yet. Although with this weapon, we actually have a shot. Let's actually take a shot at it. Um, let's see, because there is, oops, okay. I don't have a whole lot of room in here to fight him. I, I could put together a little mini arena, I think, with the ingredients that I have kind of in my inventory around. Let me try to set up an arena and see if we have the, the wherewithal to try to take this guy down. All right, I have an iron skin potion. I got a campfire out here so that we can heal up. I made a tiny little arena where we can at least jump up to a couple of different levels. And actually, let me even add <laughs> a very weak kind of third level for me to be able to jump up into. Uh, but let's just take a shot and see what happens. If I throw a bomb down here, I'm fairly certain that that will... Eater of Worlds is awoken. <laughs> Do that. Oh crap, I forgot my iron skin potion. There we go, iron skin. All right, let's see what kind of damage we can do against what will be the first boss that we are fighting in this world here in Terraria Minus 2. All right. And a yeah, ball hurt. It's doing a little bit of work, and I'm not taking too much damage, which I guess is the key thing. So long as I'm not taking too much damage, can't be complaining about how the rest of the fight is going. All right, knockback. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a problem, potentially. All right. His head has definitely taken a lot of damage. And I wonder if I could... Ooh, okay. Uh, set him on fire with flame arrows. Uh, it does seem like something caught on fire there. All right, but aiming for the head seems to be the way to go in order to destroy any pieces of him. So perhaps we'll try to do that whenever it comes back in range. Yes, this is the first time in a while that I fought this guy at kind of pretty low tiers of gear. Well, I guess I've done it in speed challenges before as well. And the Ball of Hurt, honestly, is a pretty nice weapon to fight this guy with. It's a typical gaming trope where you go down into the dungeon layer where some super boss is. And very conveniently, the best possible weapon to fight him with happens to be kind of hidden in the dungeon layer. Or in this case, not so much hidden. But just there for the taking in the Shadow Orb. Okay, heal. Alright, I'm taking some damage. Let's spend a little less time philosophizing about gaming tropes and more time trying not to die to the eater. Yikes. Ouch. I need that heart. Thank you. Alright, let's try to take down one or two of the smaller pieces so I have fewer things kind of flying at me from different angles. Like this. There we go. Great. Got some Shadow Scales. Gonna be able to make some better armor pretty soon. Yeah, with a little patience and care, with the armor rating that we have is plenty with this awesome weapon. Take this guy out. Every so often, he is being kind enough to drop some life hearts, which are helping me feeling my life. And if I need to, which I might need to in a little bit, uh, I've got some more healing potions left. Hello. Okay, heal. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, let's not get too full of ourselves here guy is still a boss, and he could kill us. Okay, I've got a life heart down below that I can go eat if I need to. Okay, let's get one of them at least. Okay, there's still another life heart up there that I don't need right now. And he's almost down. Oh, I think that's his last segment. Alright, we're gonna have a boss kill under our belts momentarily. I mean, forecasting the future, always a dangerous thing to do. But, there we go. Eater of Worlds has been defeated. Let's pick up all the loots. The loots! He has dropped. Demonite ore becomes demonite bars. Delicious. And with the shadow scales combined. Normally the first thing I would make is nightmare pickaxe, but obviously that has melee damage and has a P in it. No P's or D's. 
So instead, we're going to focus on the armor, I do believe. Seven defense would be way more than two defense. Uh, and so let's go ahead and make that. Uh, the cactus armor we can just sell. And apparently I used up... Yeah, all of it that I could do. So we'll have to farm that guy some more. But we're now up to, wow, 21 defense. Oh, it's because I still have an iron skin potion going for another uh, few seconds. But that's great. We've increased our defense rating. And since I just mentioned it before I forget about it, let's go ahead and sell... Oh, Cactus Breastplate has no value. Um, well, I'm not going to need it for any reason. And so we'll go ahead and sell it anyway. I now have enough money to buy some things that I would like, such as the bug net. So I'm going to purchase the bug net so that we can start catching some bait. And then I seem to recall that I have enough iron away in this chest that we could actually make a uh, fishing thing. We need the angler for fishing quests, though. Let's start catching some bugs, but let's see. I guess it just turned nighttime. Let's see if we can make it all the way to the left-hand side of the map, which I guess would be... Have we seen the jungle on either side, actually? If the snow is on this side, that means the dungeon should be over there, I believe. Is that right? Yes. So let's head to the left and see if we can make it all the way to the ocean, and as we go past the dungeon, perhaps... Oops. <laughs> Sorry, bunny. Uh, perhaps we will be lucky enough to be able to pick up a water bolt if it happens to be sitting on the shelf, because it'd be nice to have a magic weapon as well. If I see any bugs around, I will try to catch them in the bug net. Oh no! Oh boy. <laughs> I thought I was going to fall in a hole. Oh, I am falling in a hole. Okay, I switched to the umbrella. I'm a genius. Phew! Okay, not dead. <sighs> um, that could have been, that could have gone far, far worse. Uh, this is still going to be a pain in the neck of a place to get out of. But I ought to be able to do so. So let's just not panic. <laughs> that really scared me. I've traveled a long way across the map, and it took a long time to get here. <laughs> Finally made it across the corruption. And vultures are no longer a match. Green slime. I laugh at you, trying to attack me. With a ball of hurt? I don't think so, green slime. And I think the dungeon should be right over here. Because it feels like I've traveled a long way. Here's some more daybloom and daybloom seeds. Hooray. And yeah, maybe we'll manage to dig up another worm or something out of one of these areas. Lots of daybloom. So far I've only managed to catch one worm with the bug net. And the medium-sized map, which I believe is the size map that I generated, uh, seems bigger than I remembered. Because <laughs> it feels like I've been traveling for quite a while and we still haven't reached the dungeon. But the good news is, we are still in great shape. And, yeah, we'll take a peek at the dungeon, but again, the main goal is to get to the ocean and find the angler NPC, who I don't think you need any extra housing in order to find. I hope I'm not wrong about that. It would be a shame if I were. All right, to get through here, I'm gonna waste a sticky bomb, even though perhaps I shouldn't, just to make it easier to get back and forth in the future. Actually, it looks like I'm gonna need to use another. We will do such things, just to make it easier to travel through here in the future and to be able to get to the chest of destiny. Yeah, another wooden boomerang. But some more recall potions are nice. We can always sell the boomerang. Make sure it didn't somehow end up on my hotbar so I don't accidentally use it and break the rules. And guess what? We found the dungeon. Hello, old man. Um, I would like to take the water candle. I think that's worth spending a bomb on, and I think it will give me this furniture and give me the water candle. Let's find out. Yes, all right. And I don't even know, I can't like pick up the, if I did find the water bolt, I wouldn't be able to pick it up off the shelf without a bomb, I don't think. And yeah, I don't immediately see it here. And we're not gonna go down into the dungeon because we don't wanna risk having the dungeon guardian arrive. And so we'll take care of the goblin scout and then continue on to the left. All right, a living tree is a potential obstacle, but thanks to sticky bombs, Kazam! 
Obstacle no more. Hooray. And I think we should be just about at the ocean at this point. Although when I said that about the dungeon, I was wrong, so perhaps I'll be wrong over here as well. Or is this the ocean? No, the ocean would have a little bit of a sandy beach right before it. And so, oh dear. Yeah, this isn't deep enough that I'm gonna drown. Hooray for glow sticks. But yes, I imagine the ocean must be right over here. And so we will find out if I was right about the angler. I hope. Because I think you can just find him sleeping kind of anytime you come over to the ocean for the first time. And if I make a nice wall like that, I can do my wall climbing with my climbing claws. And the music has just changed, so we've reached the ocean. Some of the best music in the game. Reminds us of Terraria 1.2 is EZ. And sadly, assuming that is not the angler right there, I do not see a sleeping angler here. I wonder if there's some other spawn condition that I haven't taken into account. I have found him sleeping on the bottom of the ocean before, and so that's always a possible thing that might happen, which would be kind of unfortunate. Um, I may try to... yeah, let's try to go into the ocean and kind of walk down into it. Oh, see, there's a sleeping angler sleeping on top of the ocean. Just as I had mentioned before. All right, so let's go over there and wake him up. I wonder if I can, like, build under him as well. Yeah, let's do that, and then... Hi! All right, and the first fat fish would be a cloud fish. All right, that'll be hard to do. Uh, but we'll go ahead and make some NPC housing for you back home. That was the main reason I came out here. Is there anything else I need to do with the ocean? There's some guys we could try to kill for some potion ingredients and different things, but I don't know that's my highest priority right now. So instead, I'll take a recall potion to make it back home and build some NPC housing for the angler so that he'll show up over here. I had a bunch of extra cactus, and so I made some cactus furniture for a little house over here. And the angler apparently has already signed himself there. And then I used the dungeon stuff that I blew up to go ahead and make another housing for, I guess, whoever shows up. I guess at this point I'm less worried about creating more housing than I need. Because this is more housing than I need, and so we might get some random person like the party girl or something. But that is great. Our angler should show up down here pretty soon. And I'm going to organize some inventory. Amy, the nurse has arrived! I forgot all about the nurse. <laughs> Got 180 life. Ooh, 180 life. I hadn't really been paying attention to that. I'm glad I haven't gone above 200, because I don't know that I'm ready for... Actually, I probably am ready for a guardian... or guardian. <laughs> Goblin invasions at this point. Uh, but in any case, it's nice not to have such things happening before you're ready. And it's also the case, I guess, at this point that... that um, I, if I got above 200, the Eye of Cthulhu would end up summoning himself as well, which might actually be a convenient thing for me, so that I don't have to summon him. Uh, and getting the Eye of Cthulhu... Mana Crystal! Uh, getting the Eye of Cthulhu would help me uh, kind of finish out some of my armor, so that would actually be pretty good. In any case, I now have a spare two gold. Is there anything I need to buy? Piggy Bank wouldn't suck, but I can't kind of pick it back up. And so it would be kind of like a little inventory dump. Um, I don't think you can even pick it back up with a bomb. I'm not 100% sure about that. We might test that at some point, but I'm not going to spend a bunch of gold testing that out right now. The blood moon is rising! This is a message I get at the bottom of the screen as I'm sorting through some inventory. Well, the good news is I built a house here up in the sky. And so, apart from the fact that the nurse is down there and I can fix that by walking off screen for a bit so that she'll teleport up into her house. So let's go a little ways away in order to help out my NPCs. That's probably far enough. While I'm out here I see this tall tree and I'm actually a little bit short on wood after building all that housing and so let's go ahead and tear that down. And if I could find my replanty things, I would be happy to replant, but I couldn't find it in my inventory just then. Oh my gosh, look at all these zombies. Well, the ball of hurt, this will actually be kind of good. I can get some good shackles, uh, rain hats, or vanity items, which I think sell for some silver coins. 
Uh, and so it could actually be to just good to just kind of hang out here and kind of fight some bad guys during the Blood Moon. And so maybe I'll do that, actually. In addition to some profitable fights with zombies during the Blood Moon, I've also managed to catch some fireflies uh, for some fishing bait, which is great. So perhaps we'll be able to do some fishing quests in the future. And it just occurred to me that there is something useful that I could do with my copper. And so while I'm thinking of it, I would like to get my copper. And I already have my iron on me. I believe I could make some iron chains. And then I could go over to a chair and table and make myself a copper watch. Ooh. <laughs> and apparently Wilbur is getting attacked. I have a copper watch. Brisk, 1% movement speed, great. Uh, it's not something that deals damage, and so the fact that it's made with copper with P doesn't matter. Uh, now I can tell the time, at 3 a.m. We're almost near the end of the Blood Moon, which would end at 4.30. And, um, yeah, and we used up some of the copper that I'm not sure what else I would do with. Uh, but mostly just being able to know what time it is while I have the free accessory slot. This is a nice little bonus. Uh, it didn't really cost very much in terms of making it out of various ingredients. Uh, but that's very good. And so, I can't remember, I guess you can't buy anything that's from the angler. So I think I'll probably end up making the iron fishing rod in the morning, uh, which should be coming in the next 20 seconds or so. And uh, we will then check out the fishing quest of the day and see if it's one that we might be able to fulfill. Uh, because fishing quests are good, and fishing actually... Yeah, if we can improve our fishing, we can do something pretty amazing with it that I only learned about as a result of kind of preparing for this crazy playthrough with the restrictions of no P's and D's. <laughs> and so we'll find out about that, I guess momentarily, because the blood moon seems to be over. Well, I guess we're not going to find out about it momentarily. I see a worm. Oh, right, because it's raining and it's daytime now. So if I get the bug net out... Yeah, here's another worm. There might be a lot of worms around, actually. This could be a really good time to catch some bait. Can you use goldfish as bait? You can catch them in the bug net, but I don't think you can use them as bait. Rain hats sell for two silver apiece. Not a ton, but I have a lot of those things, and so that's nice. I also have, let's see, I'm wearing a normal shackle. I've got a brisk shackle and a rass shackle. Extra melee speed. Sounds pretty good. Actually, extra movement speed I think I want better, because I'm not doing a whole lot of melee, other than with the ball of heart. And we will store away at least one of these shackles in one of my chests. Um, actually, let's store a couple of them. Uh, but then we can sell an extra one. So that is part of the bonus. Free silver, very nice. Of the Blood Moon. And then if I can get into this chest over here, I was starting to organize potion ingredients. But I did manage to catch a bunch of fishing bait. And so that is very nice. Uh, let's see, I've got a zombie banner that we can sell, the tattered cloth. I may need to induce a goblin invasion at some point in the future, so that might be useful. And then I was starting to move my potions over to this chest. Uh, but let's go ahead with the iron that I have and craft the uh, fishing rod, whatever it was. I just noticed I have some grenades that I can't use, so I need to sell them. And that can also go in with potion ingredients. Okay. To the crafting station. Here we are. Uh, reinforced fishing pole. Great. Let's make that. And now we have the capability of doing some fishing. Oops. Let's go talk to the angler. The nurse is safe and sound now. What do we have? Jewelfish. Deep in the caverns. Uh, we might be able to catch that in the caverns that we've explored over here. Not sure if that's deep enough or not. There is a big lake down here, and so let's head down there and give it a shot uh, to try things out. I just put my bait away, and so let me actually make sure that I grab that. And I should also purchase some more bombs so that we could do some more caving while we're down there, probably. All right, let me get my inventory all sorted, and I'll see you guys down there. Now, unfortunately, I covered up this whole nice fishing pond, but that is easily solved with some bombs, I think. And so if I bomb out like this and that, maybe. And I really need to take out that one little piece in the middle, too. Um, hmm. Can I get a bomb there? A sticky bomb would work. 
Let's make a sticky bomb, and then I think I can just throw it there. Oops, darn it. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay, I guess they have some arc. There we go. All right, I'm pretty sure that this makes a nice size fishing pool. Oh, crap. Uh, I'm down here. <laughs> we live here now. Hey, I got a dart trap. I guess that's something. And there's actually a, uh, a thingy down there that I wouldn't mind getting. Okay, how do I get out of here before I drown? Um, crap, crap, crap. Come on, Brian, think. Can I place blocks? Nope. Uh, there's a place over here where I might be able to get a breath. Yes, okay. Uh, am I am I still dying? I'm still drowning. Hold on. Crap. I'm gonna drown. Heal. Phew! Oh. <laughs> Alright, well, that's actually probably good. And we have that now open, so next time we fall down there, we have a way to get back out. I don't see any bad guys around here, and so we should be safe, hopefully. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's actually try out fishing. And see if we can catch something. Fishing has been going kind of slow. It might just be because I don't have good fishing power yet, but let's try making this pool of water a little bit bigger. Fishing, your fishing chances increase in larger pools of water, and the way that it measures the pool is kind of like the area that's open to the air, and then how deep it goes, and then it takes like the volume of, or the area of kind of all these blocks. And so you need something that's kind of both wide and deep in order to get maximum fishing efficiency. Efficiency! Fish! Jewel fish! Great! Um, rather than stick around here longer right now, uh, we do still have a bunch of recall potions. I long for the day when we find a magic mirror. There's a traveling merchant who arrived earlier off camera. But let's do that. We get apprentice bait and a ship's wheel. All right, ship's wheel. Sure, we'll place it on the wall right now. Ooh! Uh, I might actually need space in my base for other things, so I should be a little more hesitant to do that. Do you sell anything good? Uh, gypsy robe, two defense, increased magic and critical strike. Fascinating. <gasps> Sitting ducks fishing pole! Oh, 35 gold. <laughs> but that would be a nice fishing upgrade uh, if I happen to have 35 gold, which I am nowhere near. I think I have like three. I stored it away in a chest pad tie, diamond rings, vanity item. Katana does not have a P or a D in it, uh, but weak knockback and the Ball of Hurt does just about as much damage. So yeah, I don't know if there's actually anything that I need to buy. Uh, some Pad Thai, that's actually not bad. We'll buy a couple of those because it's kind of like a buff potion effectively. And I see a butterfly who's about to get away. Nope, Julia Butterfly, now in my inventory for future fishing bait. All right, so we accomplished our first fishing, uh, accomplished. Blah, 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 blah. Accomplished our first fishing quest. It's quite the mouthful. 